first few comments, um, nothing that you haven't already read or heard yourselves, which is in the immediate aftermath of Brexit, we saw $3 trillion wiped off the global um, shares and, and values. We saw the pound plummet, um, and we saw, as Carl mentioned, investments into the UK either cancelled or postponed. Um, now, obviously, those things have started to come back up again, but as a, as the, if you like, the centre of the financial uh, markets for EU and arguably the world, uh, in, in some people's views, we know that the confidence of our markets uh, is a very fragile thing, and that it does rise and fall and have massive impacts on us, um, not just day to day, but also in terms of, of, of longer term things. So the immediate things that might have happened in your organisations could be, if you were a poor person that had to do a foreign exchange deal that you were tied into on the 24th of June, um, I suspect that you got a downside less for your money than you would have done had it gone the other way. Um, and that's something that you're not going to get back, it's gone. Similarly, pension funds, if you happen to have a valuation that was in the immediate aftermath of that, those four or five days after Brexit, where the values have plummeted, that's going to have a real impact in terms of your debt recovery plan going forward. Um, impact on your current and future grants. If you get grants either directly from the EU or you get them from somebody who re is reliant on the EU, that again is going to have an impact on you directly. But the most, most uh, impactful thing on you is the uncertainty because we know from our previous uh, experience we've been tracking with the IOF and with PwC the anxieties of the sector and their experiences through from the last recession after we had credit crunch in 2008, the uncertainty is the killer. It's the thing that strips you of your ability to plan effectively because you're constantly having to scenario plan for a whole host of different possible scenarios that may or may not happen and you're predicting them. You don't know what the actual outcome is going to be. Um, so in the longer term, we don't know what's going to happen to the pound. It may come back up, but weaker pound means less money to spend overseas. I won't say much more on that because I believe my colleagues will cover that. Similarly, if we are going to have uh, higher taxes and, and more deeper cuts from the Chancellor, that may well mean that local authorities have even greater squeezes on their budgets than they have previously seen. Yes, we've had people alluding to the fact that we're going to throw away the, the promise that 2020 would be in surplus. But don't think for one moment that's going to necessarily mean that greater sums of money are going to flow through to the local authorities, and therefore those are real impacts uh, on yourselves. Share prices for endowed funds or for funds where you've invested uh, money and you're reliant on that income, again, that may be very difficult to predict going forward. And if you're giving money to programmes or you're yourself making grants, then those <coughs> things are going to be things that you're going to have to be all over in terms of, of, of how many grants you can make or how much money you can, you can push out the <coughs> And then finally, if you, happen to do, if you do happen to have an evaluation of your pension and it pushes it the wrong way for you, what impact is that going to have on your, your solvency in terms of your uh, paper solvency? Um, because that could have a massive impact on donations uh, if people think that you are seemingly insolvent or having to pay an awful lot more money to, into your pension fund. Uh, job security, consumer anxiety, these are all things that I'm sure my colleagues will pick up. Um, like Carl, I'd like to give you a few sort of thoughts in terms of takeaway rather than being all doom and gloom. Uh, we went, we've just been through the longest, hardest, deepest recession since the Depression, and we got through it. Yes, there have been people that have really suffered, and yes, we've lost some bloody good charities along the way, but we will get through this because that's what we do. We've been around for centuries. We do this, and we do it well, so please don't uh, think that... that um, Yes, we are about to be plunged into another perfect storm, but we've weathered one already and there's no, no reason to think we can't weather this one. Um, alongside the, the upsurge in extreme views on the right, we also have seen a massive, massive cry out from people that voted Leave and Remain to embrace political change and social change, and I think that's something that we could potentially capitalise on. And I don't mean in a negative way, I mean actually be part of the movement that changes the future of the, of the country for, for the better. Um, I think we have some opportunities to potentially uh, change the way that government approached some of the things that have caused us problems in the sector. So, irrecoverable VAT. How many times have I been in meetings and been told that the state aid rules mean that we can't change irrecoverable VAT? Well, you can bet what I'm going to be asking for. <laughs> when speak. Similarly, the apprenticeship levy. Is this something that they're going to want to stick with or are they going to kick it into the long grass? There are lots of things like that where I think we may have an opportunity to shape the narrative in a much more positive way for the sector. Um, and 
and I, and I think that's, those are things that we need to start doing. So my main messages are, be all over risk, understand the risk in your organisations and don't just rely on your register, go right back to, to basics. I would be kicked by my team if I didn't just uh, give a plug to a publication that we've just launched on rethinking risk. It's free to download, go and do so. Understand your business model. Um, this is a real opportunity to really understand your business model. Do you know where your main um, areas of income comes from? Do you know what these political changes are going to do for your ability to earn or to rely on grants or to, to have other forms of funding? Um, and then finally, understand where your sensitivities are. Um, if you can plan for some of those sensitivities to come out um, and you can take out some of the volatility for yourselves, you'll ride for the next the few years, because it will be years, I don't think it's going to be months, um, and it will prepare you for the next time when we do actually start Article 50 having been triggered and the, the next uh, phases of this uncharted water that we're all in.